what is going on everybody welcome back to another episode of 30 minutes of hell brought to you by the field of 68 podcast network i am your host brandon baker joined by joey jackson and matt jackson and we appreciate you tuning in to talk some razorback hoops with us we've got some stuff to talk about eric musselman has left the team he is taking the usc head coaching job we're going to get into that our feelings about him leaving who might come in to replace him transfer portal talk looking at our current roster that is has fewer players on it than this podcast does <laughs> but we're gonna dive straight into all of it here in just one second so <coughs> let's right away right, right off the bat i just want to get our thoughts out on Musselman. his tenure here was a lot of fun for the most part it's it's gonna leave with a sour taste in its mouth because this last season was not fun it was not very enjoyable it was on a down note there were rumors off the court missed the tournament. There was all kinds of stuff going on. But you can't overlook the heights that he brought Arkansas basketball back to. I mean, it had been 25 years since we had experienced the success that Musselman brought to this program. Uh, and, and I'm very, very grateful to him for elevating the program back, for giving me a lot of good memories associated with Razorback basketball. Um, he took it to heights that I wasn't sure that I was going to get to see in my lifetime because everyone always talks about the 91 and 92 seasons and the 94 championship and getting back to it in 95 and none of us were born yet. And, you know, you may think that makes us really young, but we're closer to 30 than we are 20 at this point. So it's been that long since Arkansas basketball had seen that kind of success. Quite the drought. Um, yeah. Yep. So I'm, I'm grateful from us. It's hard to fault him for wanting to move back home. He's from out West on the West coast. Um, and I see a lot of people with, you know, like I said, a sour taste in their mouth with the way that he's leaving, how quiet he's been bailing after a bad season. I get all of it. I get that our roster construction looks kind of very questionable right now. There's not a lot going on there, but I'm very grateful for what must brought to Arkansas basketball and what he brought to, to me specifically as an Arkansas sports fan. So, you know, thank you, Mus. Good luck. I'm ready to move on. I'm ready for the next chapter. I'm ready to see where Arkansas basketball can rise to now. Yeah, and it like you said, Brandon, it does suck coming off of a season and the circumstances like like it did, um, because <clears throat> Mus has given the state of Arkansas Razorback sports so much, you know, so much excitement. You know, you mentioned the Elite Eights, you mentioned the Sweet Sixteens. He gave us championship dreams. You know, even at the start of this season, we were like, you know, this is our year. Like we all, all three of us were, were plotting to, to get final four tickets this year, because this was the year that we were going to do it. And Mus gave that, that hope back into the fan base that, like you said, hasn't been there for, you know, almost 30 years. Um, but, uh, wish Mus nothing but the best. Um, Wish him all the success, unless in some tournament setting we meet USC. Um, I don't wish him success in that area. But uh, he, you know, I have some some great memories tied to Mus. He he brought excitement back to Razorback basketball, and you know you, you can't knock a guy that that does that to a state. So we uh, wish him the best for sure. Yep, and I will never forget each Elite Eight appearance, each Sweet Sixteen appearance. I will remember the day, the time, the, the how the air smelled. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he has given us amazing memories. And, I mean, like every Arkansas fan, really, of course, I'm disappointed with how it ended. I, I wish it could have ended better. But can't blame him. Going back home. I feel like I think most people can agree that USC is a step down in terms of a basketball program, which in all honesty, once you get, I, I feel like once you get to Musselman's age, you kind of want to chill out. Arkansas fans, including myself, throw expectations on you. I mean, dump them. And it's a stressful gig. And at a certain point, I understand. Um, but overall, I wish him a very average career because if it's anywhere above average, that means he can maybe beat Arkansas if they ever play each other. So good luck but hey muscle a man of memories and a man of memes you know we will never <laughs> we will never forget shirtless mice no. what what an icon of a of a, a character for for arkansas sports <laughs> i know it yeah and like you said matt maybe a step down as a basketball program a basketball school um but i do think that 
that must and his wife maybe prefer the style of living and where yeah. they're going in Southern California oh, yeah. and LA. And so, you know, happy for them on a personal level sucks on a basketball level, but we move on. And speaking of that, it's time to, to figure out who is coming in to replace him. You know, um, there's a lot of names floating out there, but one really has come straight to the top as, as the, the number one name on the hop words. Uh, we're going to get into that, give our thoughts on him and some of the other options if that falls through. But first, we're going to take one quick break and we will be right back. The best month of the year is here, which is why you need to know that we are partnered with BetMGM. We'll be using BetMGM lines for making all of our picks and predictions, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, you can use bonus code FIELD, and you will get up to a $1,500 first bet offer on your first wager with BetMGM. Here's the best part. All you need to do is deposit and bet $10 of your hard-earned money to get it. This is what you have to do to make it work. Download the BetMGM app and sign up using that bonus code FIELD. Deposit at least $10 and place your first wager on any game. You'll get up to $1,500 in bonus bets if your bet loses. Just make sure you use that bonus code FIELD when you sign up. Most importantly... We have some fun stuff coming up for the rest of the NCAA tournament. Bet insurance tokens, college hoops, odds boost, and the thing that I love the most, a nice little parlay boost, as well as a ridiculous array of prop bets for anything that you could possibly imagine betting on. From odds on getting to the Final Four to National Championship futures, I'm calling it right now. Bet MGM is the king of the prop bet. So go download the Bet MGM app. Use that code FIELD and sign up today. And while I've got you a quick request, the best way to support the Field of 68 content you get for free is to engage with us. Rate and review the pod in any podcast app. Like and share the YouTube videos that you enjoy. Tell your friends about us. It all helps in a world where the algorithm is king. And now, back to the show. All right. So a few days ago, a couple of weeks ago, I don't know how long ago it was at this point, Eurocheck tweets that weird video, right? of Mus on the bus and he's like, why are you still here? That kind of stuff. I think your check has had his man since that video came out. I don't think that had anything to do with Musselman still being at Arkansas. I think that was a Musselman get the hell out of Arkansas because I'm ready with the next, you know, with the ace up my sleeve. Um, I think your check has had his guy known the, who he's going to pull out to replace Mus for a while now. Uh, and the name at the top of the list right now is Chris Beard pretty good authority i have it on pretty good authority that it seems like it's going to be him nothing is official until it becomes official but it feels like it's all but done we're just waiting on an, an announcement at this point um people all over the place are reporting this national guys are saying that he's risen to the top of the search local guys are saying that they're just waiting on pen to paper at this point i mean it's it feels like it's going to be chris beard uh, so let's let's get into our thoughts a little bit about him i mean it's hard to really dive into it without you know mentioning that he is what three years less than three years removed from the allegations of uh, domestic abuse and that kind of stuff i don't know exactly the the legal terminology that was applied that ended that case but it's no longer hanging over his head and i think that us not being the first team not even the first power five team not even the first sec team to give him that second chance kind of eases my conscience a little bit that like nobody really turned an eye when he got hired at Ole miss you know what i mean like, it was just okay. And, I, you know, start off by saying by no means condone what he was convicted or alleged to do. But in terms of just a basketball standpoint, which is what I would prefer to focus on, it's nice that we are not the first program trying to pull him out and pulling some kind of stunt. You know, he's been coaching now for a year in the same conference that we're in. So moving on from that, just as a basketball coach, I think Chris Beard is a dude. I think that he's got almost a 70% win percentage on his career. He took Texas Tech to the national championship game. He coached at Euler and took them to the second round of the NCAA tournament, not only proving his ability to coach and take a, a smaller school into the tournament and win in a big setting, but also showing that he has ties in this state uh, around central Arkansas. And along with that, I think a big, uh, a big plus to getting – Chris Beard on campus that will most likely happen is that I think Alan Flanagan, his coach, his assistant coach would follow him. And Flanagan is from Arkansas, has ties to the state. There's been some bad blood between him and, and, and the hogs, the university, but I think it was his uh, grandfather, or his dad, I think it was his grandfather that was a coach for the football team for a while. His son grew up in Little Rock Park view, went to high school all in Arkansas all through his high school uh, career 
I just think if you got a guy like Flanagan on the staff and you manage to keep someone like Ronnie Brewer, you're not missing out on many in-state guys that you really want if you bring in those kind of connections and those kind of recruiters. So there's just a lot of reasons like that. His winning percentage, his ties, his ability. He's shown that he can win. He's shown that he can get to the tournament. He's shown that he can win on a big stage. And he's got the ties, I think, to be successful as a recruiter in the state, which is something that I think was a big reason. One of the biggest pieces to the puzzle of must wanting out of wanting to leave is that I think he burned a lot of those bridges in state. So I think that's a big plus, a big bonus for me personally. Um, what do you guys think about Beard if he is the hire? Yeah, I I really like it. And I think my biggest reason is because the in-state recruiting. I mean, Central Arkansas has some dudes and a lot of dudes coming up. Uh, so if Beard, hopefully, if he is hired, stays for a while, it, we can build a real, almost a dynasty maybe. I don't know how amazing we'll be, but... If we don't miss out on those in-state recruits, we're going to have some guys, and I really like that. And, I mean, shoot, if you could bring Euler and he brought Texas Tech back from the grave, I mean, I like it. I like this guy. He's a winner, and that's all I care about. You know, allegations aside, he's a winner. He's a basketball coach. That's what I'm concerned about, and I'm happy with it. Yeah, I I agree completely, Matt. I'm I'm kind of on the on the side of uh, the in-state talent that we've been missing out on. I mean, yeah. you look at Alan Flanagan from uh, from Ole Miss. I mean, he's a Little Rock guy. Like we, that's a big miss. You know, there's a lot of in-state talent that I think that is just the ball has been dropped on because, like you yeah. said, Brandon, just must not willing to nurse those connections. Uh, so I am excited for that aspect. I, I think uh, I think Beard's a great coach. Um, I, he plays a hard-nosed brand of basketball that I think Arkansas fans will really enjoy. Um, I think it's a good pickup. Uh, you know, I, I don't, like, Brandon, kind of like what you said, I don't see this falling through. I, I think this is pretty much a, a locked-up deal. It's live on Wikipedia saying that he's the, <laughs> the Hogs head coach. So, uh, I mean, w what more can we trust if we can't trust right, Wikipedia? Right. So. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I think that that will be. I think that'll be a good fit. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to this new era of Arkansas basketball for sure. Yep, and because it feels so official should probably make us even more nervous that it's not official because we are Arkansas fans. So just in case, just in true. case that does fall through, I wanted to throw a couple of other names against the wall <laughs> just to throw them out there. Um, I do think it's going to be Chris Beard, but you never know, just in case. Uh, if Beard is not the guy, if something comes up, there's a hang up, he decides he doesn't want to come here, whatever the case may be. Um, I think your next two phone calls probably go to Will Wade, which is weird to say as much as Arkansas fans did not like him a few years ago when he coached at LSU. But again, the dude can coach. Um, he, he got, you know, he got let go from LSU for violations that are now legal pretty much, you know, so <laughs> that's not really a factor in it, but a very high win percentage won 30 games this year at McNeese state has a very similar career win percentage as uh, Chris Beard, maybe underperformed at LSU, but I think he's hungry to get back into the uh, power five school, uh, maybe even to the sec. I think if Chris Beard does come to Arkansas, will Wade is probably number one on Ole Miss's list of coaches to replace him. So yep, yep. that could be something to watch there too, but that would probably be my next call. And then the third guy on the list for me is uh, Jerome Tang won the coach of the year award, I think two years ago or last year. I mean, last year, and yeah. Last year took Kansas state to the elite eight had a good guard play there with them, had guys like Marquise Noel and Tyler Perry, who is, has um, Arkansas connections too. I think he's out of eligibility, but, you know, may, maybe some connections there, somebody to vouch for Tang if he were to be the Arkansas uh, head coach. Um, I don't know that they get that far down on their list. I don't know if Tang is even an option at this point, but those would be the next two guys that I would call. Uh, but but again, yeah. to clarify, I think it is still going to be Chris Beard. Brandon, kind of following up on Tang, I – I've been an advocate for, for Tang, you know, for a while now uh, with the must rumors flying around. I, I don't know if we've vocally expressed it on the pod, but, you know, us three have, have talked. But I like Tang from a, a few angles, just in case, like you said, the beard thing falls through. We don't expect it to. But uh, like you said, Naismith, Co Coach of the Year last year, uh, he's I like him for the the guard reasons. 
So uh, I have been very vocal about wanting a point guard in next season, someone who can facilitate, and he has done very well with his guard play the last two years. Uh, you mentioned Marquise Noel. He was top three in assists per game uh, in the the year before this season. So he was he was averaging 7.6 assists per game. Tyler Perry was in the top 100 in assists per game this year, averaging almost four and a half. Uh, and both of those guys, you mentioned Perry, but both of those guys have Arkansas ties. Uh, Perry, he's he spent time in Springdale. He may have played high school ball in Springdale. Is that right, Matt? Uh, um... I know he played. I, know. I know he uh, played Harvard. in Spyro, Oklahoma. Harbor, that was it. Yeah, yeah. Is Harbor? So, is Harbor Spring? Springdale? Springdale. I think so. Yeah. Is that? I, I couldn't remember. Yeah. It's up there. Um, <laughs> and then Noel, although he is from New York, I believe, uh, he played at Euler for three years. So, uh, kind of interesting there. But uh, you know. It's, it's funny how like some of these things kind of connect with each other with, you know, I, I would have never thought that Tang has, you know, these these big Arkansas connections and players just in, in two years. But uh, I do like him for the, the reasons that he's built up these guards. Um, but I don't think that, like you said, Brandon, I don't think we'll get to him to even be worrying about that. But like him as a coach, I will say. Uh, yeah. And the one the one. Uh, I don't even know if I would call it a red flag or a concern. I feel like those are strong words, but um, Tang has relied heavily on smaller guards mm -hmm. and that's worked for him at Kansas state. I don't know how often that works in the sec. That's I true. prefer to have yeah. the bigger guards, the guys that are more versatile defenders, but you know, we, we don't have often a guy that averages five plus assists per game. So mm -hmm. I'm okay with yeah. that kind of style too, if we go that direction. And also, it wasn't Mus's style to have a small guard anyway. So, I mean, if you're used to it, if you're used to coaching it, I'm sure it would be fine. But, I mean, we only you, saw success with big guys. You could you could argue that it wasn't Mus's style to have a guard that could pass the ball, honestly. <laughs> True. <laughs> but, True. Uh, yeah, I agree, Matt. <laughs> That's a really good point. He did his best with Mason Jones and J.D. Note, neither of yeah. which known, <laughs> yeah. known floor generals, you know. <laughs> Both incredible players, but not right. as far as guards. So, um, all right. So I, I think that really sums up. I don't think we need to go much deeper than that on the coaching search. I think we're all in agreement that Chris Beard seems to be the number one guy. And, and I'm excited to see what he can do here as a recruiter and as a coach. I, I'd go as far to say that he might be better X's and O's than Musselman. You know, he might have more of an offensive philosophy. He might not recruit in the same type of defensive guys that Mus has thrived with here, but Maybe he'll recruit the guys that fit his system and we'll have just a different style of play, you know? So yeah. I'm, I'm ready to see it. That's really the end of that story. But speaking of the guys that he's going to bring in though, Oh my God, the roster right now <laughs> is barren. There's nobody Rocky. on left on the roster. So we're going to dive into some of our thoughts on that and all of the open spots available, but we're going to take one more quick break and we will be right back. Okay. So the roster for the 2024, 25 season Currently, we have not heard from Tremont Mark. We have not heard from Trevin Brazil. And that's it. And we have two <laughs> freshmen that are committed. But I wouldn't be surprised if at least one of them follows Mus, if not both. I don't know. Right. Um, I believe Isaiah Elohim is from California. So following Mus to USC wouldn't be the biggest surprise there. Uh, he, we haven't heard anything from him. I, I don't know if he's going, but I would not be shocked if he did. Um and so you've got literally just Thursday alone, you had Bayfall, Caleb Battle, both hit the portal, and Josh Cohen decide that he is going to USC with Musselman, along with the announcement that Musselman is officially going to USC. So you're losing four guys off your team, and one of them's the head coach all on the same day. You're left with two returners, potentially two freshmen. It looks bleak right now. But... Just like Musselman has been working the portal the whole time that he's still been Arkansas's head coach, you know that Chris Beard has been doing the same thing while he's still Ole Miss's head coach or whoever the next coach is that's going to come in. They've been working the portal. If you're not, you're way behind. You know, you can't just assume that you're getting a different job and stop doing what you're doing. So anybody that Chris Beard has already been recruiting players that he may have lined up, he even has one freshman committed, a seven foot one center that may or may not follow him i don't know but he's rated higher uh, john bowl he's rated higher than both of the guys committed to arkansas right now 
So you never know. I mean, you have guys like Cohen that leave and follow Musk, but you could have some guys that follow Beard into the program too. It goes both ways. Um, probably not enough guys to fill the eight open spots on the roster right now, but enough to maybe get a start going. Um, and and one guy that I'm really interested to see his decision now is Layden Blocker. We have not seen anything from him since he entered the portal. No visits, no uh, like top four schools or anything like that. When you know transfer guys are looking at schools, we haven't seen anything from him. I think that he has been watching this situation with Muss and considering a return to Arkansas if Muss wasn't back. And so now I'm I will, I'm curious. I want to see what he does now that uh, Muss is gone. Once once the new coaching uh, now once the announcement of the new guy is made, I want to see what Layden Blocker's decision is after that. I think there's a good chance that he could come back. I really do, and that would be awesome to have yeah, that. I'd love to have him. Block. Um, but I think I still think most of the guys that were considering Arkansas probably are still considering Arkansas. Um, I this this is just my thoughts in today's you know college landscape. To me, guys are more often than not committing for some combination of three reasons, and that is the coach, playing time opportunity, and NIL opportunity. One hundred percent. Only one of those things has left today. They have more playing opportunity than you can imagine right now on right. the Arkansas roster. <laughs> And the NIL hasn't really changed. I mean, it's not going to change unless something, unless Beard comes in and or whoever comes in and changes it. I mean, the money didn't just snap and disappear with Musselman, right? It's the same donors that are here. So if you have guys that were impressed by Mus, then okay, then maybe they're not still coming to Arkansas. But if you have guys that like the Arkansas program, like the money opportunity, the playing time opportunity, the culture, the fan base, anything like that, I think they could still be interested in coming here especially if you get a proven winner in the door soon, like a Chris Beard or someone like that, I think you can turn around and still get some quality recruits, some quality transfers, but it's going to have to happen and uh, start happening fast because there's a lot of spots to fill. So uh, how are you guys feeling about the roster construction right now and what it might look like soon? I, I feel very uneasy about it. Um, you know, you, you bring up some great points regarding like Layden potentially coming back. You know, that's someone that we've talked about, you know, for a while, hoping that he comes back in a, in a Razorback Jersey, but it's, you know, it's so tough losing a guy like Musselman who is very highly regarded as one of the best portal recruiters in the, in college basketball. So um, that's just, it's where we're at. We have to accept it. Um, I, I hope that we get some some solid talent out of the portal. You know, I, I'll be honest. I don't I don't know how well Beard is in the portal, but um, I'm hoping that you know we get some guys that follow him, like you said, Brandon, and uh, fill out our roster pretty quickly. Uh, the portal moves fast. You know, we can't we can't miss out on on guys kind of on the on the in betweens and and whatnot. But um, like I mentioned earlier, I am still excited about this new era of Razorback basketball. I don't know. I don't think anyone knows what this season's going to look like as a Razorback fan, uh, just because we we don't have anyone to, to go off of right now. You know, we were, if you would have asked us four or five weeks ago, um, if we would at least have our focal point being battle back, uh, we would have felt a little better about that. But um, I think I mentioned to y'all a couple days ago that I wasn't sure if Battle would, would come back if Mus leaves because he was he was on that Mus bus. You know, he vocalized it multiple times like I'm riding with Mus. So uh, I, I kind of expected him to, to hit the portal once Mus signed elsewhere. Um, so that's a that's a heavy hit, you know, thinking that we were going to get a guy like him back who just turned into a total flamethrower at the end of the season. Um, but the, the door is wide open, so we'll, we'll see kind of what, what comes of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I'm not too worried. Like Brandon said, we didn't, we only lost one of those parts, um, being the coaching side, we still have the money, which is, I think the biggest part for a lot of players nowadays. And then, I mean, we got Chris Beard, it, most likely. Fingers crossed. Um, but I, I think we're going to be fine. It's early. I mean, there's still guys on those final four teams that will, may hit the transfer portal once season's over, you know, um, or test the waters in the draft and hit the transfer portal. 
uh, either or, there's still a lot of time left. I'm not too concerned about how our roster looks right now. Uh, it, I mean, it is scary having so little, but I mean, we're not Missouri. We're not Vandy. Uh, we're a serious program. So I think people are going to come knocking at our door and we're going to get some guys. I think we're going to be competitive next year. I don't know how good, but I think we're going to be competitive. I don't think we're going to have just a absolute crapshoot of a year next well, year. You know, uh, funny thing. Let me bring Jerome Tang back up uh, <laughs> in his in his appearance in the Elite Eight. He had two returners back uh, from the previous year, and one of them was Noel. But um, he, you know, he hit hit the year with two guys returning and. Uh, they hit the elite elite eight, so who knows right. what what Razorbacks will do? <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, and Matt brings up a really good point too that it is still very early in portal season, um, and that's not to say that you can take your time too much or relax at all with it. But I mean, right now is usually when Arkansas has started getting commits over the last three years. You know, they're usually playing through the second weekend of the tournament, and this week is usually the first week that they really start having the option to do anything. And they've had a head start on that. And I know that Muss has had a head start on that, but Chris Beard rejected an NIT uh, invitation yep. to focus on the portal. So he's been focused on it too. I mean, and I think he is a very great evaluator of talent as well. I think that's one of his biggest strengths. You asked about that, Joey. I don't know that he's made splashes in the transfer portal the way Muss has, but he's never really had – he. Lately, he has not had a program the way that Muss has around him that he could bring in the high quality transfers that he needed to build around a team like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there's still a lot of guys out there. And I think that you need to get on it early, like we're talking about, to get ahead of some of these guys so that other schools don't steal them out from under you. But you also don't need to just rush and get, you know, six commits in the next three days and miss out on other opportunities, you know, down through because the portal season does last over a month. Um more than that i think they have i think they have 45 days to enter their name and then it's more than that for them to like actually commit so um you definitely want to get out ahead of it but it is still early enough that i'm not i'm not freaked out by it but there's definitely a lot of work to do you know we're gonna have to see what what he comes up with whoever it is i we, we are saying beard but whoever it right is. and if, if it is beard going back to him i mean he coached at texas for a little bit and that texas team was good were they not they were pretty good. I think they underachieved I, in the tournament, but they were a good yeah, team. I, I mean, I think they were pretty highly ranked. Um, and he, what, he got fired before, like midseason, wasn't it? Yeah, he coached one year at Texas, went 22 and 12 and made the tournament. And then he got fired eight games into his second year at Texas. Gotcha. So, I mean, I, I think he can get some talent here, no doubt about it. So, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited for it. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for the next step, too. I'm ready. I think Arkansas has awoken a little bit, and people see that you can compete and you can win here. And by people, I mean national media, players, other coaches. I, this is the biggest job opening of the coaching cycle in college basketball this year, mm -hmm. yep. truthfully. And that's like not just being an Arkansas fan. I think we're a top 12 job in the country right now. Oh, yeah. There's not yeah. a lot of – there's not a lot of schools with our history and not a lot, even with the recent history, even with how bad we were this year. So I don't know. I'm like, like kind of like Matt said, I'm excited. I'm nervous about it. There's always potential for things to go wrong with change like this, but I feel good that we're in a good spot and I'm excited. I'm ready to see what comes next. Um, but that's really all we got for you guys today. A lot of movement going on. We'll be back with more news as it comes up. Hopefully we can get a coach in soon. Hopefully he's already hired by the time you're listening to this. But uh, And then start getting some transfer commits soon after that. But until then, we appreciate you guys tuning in to listen to some Razorback Hoops with us. Uh, reminder, we are brought to you by the Field of 68 Podcast Network. You can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your stuff at. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, whatever it is you do on those platforms. Uh, and and we are the uh, 30 Minutes of Hell podcast. I have been your host, Brandon Baker, joined by Joey Jackson and Matt Jackson. And as always, go Hogs. <laughs>